Welcome to the Infinite Life Podcast. I'm your host, Katish Haberfield. I am an intuitive sound healer and an incarnation guide. This podcast is for you if you wish to make sense of your life by understanding your past, present and future incarnations. For we are all spiritual beings in a human body who have never died, just changed costumes from life to life in order to have experiences that help our soul grow and expand. My hope is that this podcast helps you weave together strands from all lifetimes so that you can make peace with your journey and understand that you are a perfect expression of your soul in this moment, in this incarnation. In this episode, we're going to be looking at a couple of definitions to help you understand some of the terminology that I'll be talking about in this episode and in other episodes. And don't forget that you can go to my website, katish.com, and ask me a question at any time using the voice recording button there. There's no question too silly. After we do some of those definitions, then we're going to go and have a look at what it means and why it's important to honour the soul's journey through all the different incarnations and why it's as important as honouring the ancestors and their wisdom in our lives. We'll also have a funny story from my life about learning to use my pendulum. And we'll hear some interesting thoughts from Henry Ford on reincarnation. So go and grab yourself a cuppa and let's get into the next episode. Hello. Well, my name is Brenda and um, I did have a past life regression in my early early 30s, because during a divorce, I was having nightmares that I sometimes experienced at other times in my life, but only for like one night. And then it might be years before it would occur again. But during the divorce, it was happening a lot. And the terror, uh, the overwhelming aftermath of the dream and the smells would last with me. So I had a past life regression. It took a while for me to let the hypnotist get me to that lifetime, but we came to realize it was a past lifetime in a German concentration camp. I won't go into those details now, but let it be said, that realizing that made the dream stop. Not always the odors, but they became less and less frequent over time. This was about my interrelationship with Judaism. I have none in this lifetime except a strong belief that I have Jewish lineage. I am now in my 70s, and it took me 70-some years to prove that I do have a connection to the crypto-Jews that hid in the mountains of Italy to escape the Inquisition. I've also had other experiences that relate to memories of times of persecution as a Jew, and probably as a pagan. What I've learned from these is the importance of how hard our ancestors worked and what they did to survive so that I could have my lifetime in a human body now. And I value that, and I value that strength. It gives me a sustaining aspect of okayness about going forward in these times when all of humanity is facing a time of possible great extinction. It makes me feel free to give my 
grandchildren the strength, or I hope I do, to face hard times, and that what they carry with them internally is more important than any material things they can have with them. And these connections throughout time and throughout space can give us what we need to face making decisions when we have no idea what the right decision or the, all the possible outcomes could be. So I could say much more on that, but my time is running out. I have lots of other past life memories from other times that have helped me with specific relationships and and being aware of the interconnectedness of all life. This is Brenda Astorino. Concept. Soul counterpart. Imagine a diagram of the head of a flower with its circular centre and its petal leaves. The soul is the circle in the middle and the soul counterparts, the individual incarnations with their own personalities and egos, are the petals. Each petal forms an integral part of the whole but has its own identity which it never loses. In the same way, each petal is always connected to its higher self, which oversees the journey of the soul through all its incarnations. When a petal chooses to incarnate, to have a specific experience, it is born with a, as a human with a name, identity and a human lifetime. Once the lifetime has expired, it returns to spirit, reunites with the greater soul and after a life review, this identity does not cease to exist. It exists in perpetuity. When the soul chooses a new incarnation, a new petal breaks off and merges with the human identity and becomes a new person with its own ego and personality. And so the cycle continues until all lessons are learned and the soul has evolved enough to become a guide. An example of this would be soul. The soul actually has a spirit name because it originates in spirit, okay? So you will have your own spiritual name. The petals are the different incarnations. So let's pretend the spirit name is Edwina. The petal names might be Henry, Fred, Gertrude, Melba, Jenny, Frederick, Ishtar, Magnus. Each one of those petals, although in reality there can be thousands, hundreds and thousands, it just depends upon the age of your soul, are all different incarnations. Each one of those has an ego and an identity. If you want to imagine a gravestone, each one of those petals is a gravestone. Each one had a life, each one had a family, and they had a personality. It's the personality and the experiences that are attached to the personality which are part of the splice of the soul that gets incarnated that once the body has been used and discarded and returns to spirit, that personality, that identity remains. Which is why if you ever watch a or listen to a podcast or a YouTube channel such as channeling error, why mediums can contact personalities, celebrities from the past who have disincarnated. Disincarnated is when a soul is no longer incarnated and they can have interviews with them because the identity of the person who has lived never, ever is extinguished. That forms a part of your Akashic record, part of history, and you can access that incarnation at any time. 
So when the soul is in its body, it's known as incarnated. When it is purely in spirit form and not in human form, it's called disincarnated. So part of a soul is always in spirit form and part is always in the current incarnation. And this is why we can access past lives through past life regression. The most important reason to learn more about our soul's journey across time is to gain a greater insight into the wisdom of our higher self. We have learned to pay homage to our ancestors, yet we have not learned the lessons of the wisdom of the self. The entire reason for the reincarnation system is to expand the soul's capacity for growth. Each and every incarnation, therefore, has contributed towards the growth of the soul and must be witnessed and paid homage to. For all have provided us with invaluable experiences and lessons, and we should not sweep them under the carpet. When we take time to learn their stories, the stories of our soul counterparts, and not just see them as incarnations who experience situations that caused us irrational fears or phobias or anything along the troublesome line in our lives today, but we stop and see these soul counterparts as living human beings, we can see that there is much that this version of our soul did for us that was in the positive as well. So while we might do a past life regression to alleviate a fear or a phobia or to clear a money block, for example, we need to be careful not to only look for the negative traits that need to be cleared from our system. It's important to bear witness and to honour first. Without doing this, we negate their incarnation in our eyes. For what they have done is the hard yards in our honour. What they have done is to experience the emotions and situations that they do not wish us to have to experience again. But such is their great love for us and our soul journey. So we must hold our soul counterparts in great reverence irrespective of their life's journey, and importantly, we must try to do that which is oh so hard for human beings, to try not to judge, and in our judgment, place shame upon that incarnation. For we are only judging because we have their experience under our belt. So if we have been unfaithful in a prior incarnation, for example, this may have allowed us to come into this incarnation with the utmost respect for our partners and the desire and ability to be 100% faithful to all our partners this time round. We would not have this experience if it was not for the previous incarnations of our soul counterparts. If we were someone in a previous incarnation who tired easily of their spouse once the adrenaline of the love drug subsided and needed to replace this sugary love rush with an affair or two on the side, then in our life review, we may realise that once the sugar finally did run out, that there were no more highs to be gained and we were left with a dreadful headache and a trail of broken hearts behind us. We, when we were that soul counterpart, may have been close to the experience of true depth of love, the kind that spans all ages, because we were searching for the beginner teenage level of love. And in doing so, we denied our soul the experience of being truly known by another at a deep, deep level. We may have not also seen how our actions wounded others and how they really were brought to us to provide us with what we were seeking. It's just that we were wearing sunglasses, even when it was dark. If we learn to truly become still, to distinguish the thoughts of the ego from the thoughts of our higher self and of our soul counterparts, we can tap into an immense database of wisdom from our other incarnations. Yes, it is truly possible. When we are silent, we can hear the executive summaries of all the experiences that are relevant to the situation that is facing us in the moment. If we listen to the whispers, the positive, well-meaning ones, not the ego-based fear ones, we can be given the words and indications which will lead us in the path that the soul wishes us to traverse, based on our prior history. And when we allow our intuition to flourish, we can connect with our guides and higher self to ask for advice in the moment. 
But even more amazing is that we can connect with our prior incarnations and speak with them directly at the corresponding moment in time, which is important for our understanding of our soul's journey. I'm not talking about the disincarnated version of yourself. I'm talking about the identity that was you in the incarnation whilst they were alive. The you of yesterday, tomorrow. It's a radical thought, but there is no such thing as time constraints. And I promise you, you have the ability to do this, but only once you truly do the work and fine-tune your intuitive abilities. Until you have done this, you'll need a psychic, a medium, or a channeler, or even past life regression. When we talk to our soul counterparts, this is not channeling, in my belief. This is direct communication, soul counterpart to soul counterpart, because you are talking to yourself in another body. There is no external party. The only thing that you need to remember is that they are in the thick of their life, so what you're experiencing is their true ego-based self who has not yet had the re higher realisations from and the benefits of a life review. And you need to learn what to do with those conversations. If you are fastidious in establishing clear communication with your higher self, your higher self may give you permission to communicate directly with your soul counterparts. They will, in my experience, always be on standby when your soul counterpart wishes to establish a communication. For me, I achieved this through my pendulum initially, and once I have verified the identity of the soul counterpart and double-checked the validity of that identity through my own personal processes to ensure that they are coming from the light and are not a trickster, and I have verified their identity with my higher self, then we can begin the conversation. So it's not something that you do on the spur of the moment. Often your higher self will give you a code word, for me, it seemed irritating at first because I noticed a pattern that each guide and soul counterpart started off their conversation with me with a particular word. And I was like, why are they saying this one word? I get it. Like I got the message. We already went through this with my previous person that I was communicating with. They already told me the lesson. I've already put that in action. So why are they keep, why do they keep all using the same word? And then I got it. One of my guides, who is famous for her laughter and her light approach in life, made me laugh and realise that it was a code word, a private inner joke between them and me, which was a way of verifying that these guys that were coming through to me were from the light, not a fake, not a negative entity. Remember, if you embark on this journey, if you wish to, com to communicate with your counterparts, your highest self guides and soul counterparts will never, ever speak negatively to you. They may have wisdom for you, but it will be communicated in a loving manner. You must be fastidious with your energy and your energy cleanliness. You must have a regular energy cleansing process. You must be mindful of your vibration. You must do the work to vibrate at the right level to have the gift given to you to achieve such communication. Mostly, soul counterpart communication is for introspection, not for boasting on social media, so that you can gain insight into the characters whom you have played, so that you can love them for all their quirks and idiosyncrasies and learn how you've changed since then, so that you can appreciate and love yourself even more now. The higher respect you have for yourself, the more self-love you have, the higher you vibrate. The more you can attract that's of the same vibration into your life. Remember, your soul counterparts are your friends because they are your own soul guides. For there is no one who knows what it is to be you, more than you, across all incarnations. Make friends with the you of now, tomorrow and yesterday and you will begin to appreciate the subtle intricacies of the wonder of being a human.
before you go running out and getting yourself a pendulum and playing with it willy-nilly, may I stop you for a moment and ask you to find a trusted teacher to teach you how to use the pendulum. That's not my purpose in life, but I will share with you a resource that I found particularly handy. I received my pendulum as a gift in the mail from one of my teachers. And hopefully she'll be a guest on the podcast soon. Now, when I must admit to you, when I received my pendulum in the mail, and I hope this gives you a chuckle, and it's from Joanna Hunter, I looked at it and I thought, oh, wow, isn't that a beautiful bookmark? (laughs) So, you know, sometimes we can have things in the cupboard for a while that aren't what they seem to be. We may not be ready to learn how to use them and may not even understand what they are. But when the time comes, your mind will suddenly click and think, oh my God, that's not a bookmark. That's a pendulum and I can use it for something. Now, to add a little bit more of insight into that story, I didn't know specifically how to use it, nor did I admit to Joanna my thoughts on the lovely bookmark that I received. Maybe I even sent her a message and she was just too polite to point out my lack of spiritual knowledge at the time. But I was helping my friend Nat clear out her parents-in-law house when they were moving into a retirement village. And she kindly allowed me to scour the bookshelves and take what I wanted. Now, one of the resources that I took that day has been extremely helpful in my understanding of how to use a pendulum. And so I recommend to you the following book, and I will put it in the show notes. The book is called The Great Pendulum Book, and it's by Petra Sonnenberg. And inside The Great Pendulum Book is an explanation on how to get to know your pendulum. There is exercises that you can do to train your pendulum, how to prepare to work with the pendulum and when the cat is not trying to sit on the book, which is always a good sign that it likes the book, Um, a whole bunch of charts that you can actually use so you don't need to print them out, which can help you practice getting answers from your higher self and learning to distinguish between your higher self and your ego so that you can start with the simple things like there's a chart in here for example that is which essential oil is most useful to me today and then there is a diagram and you after you have verified that the pendulum is connecting with your higher self allow the pendulum to choose the essential oil of the day other Interesting ways to learn to use your pendulum include charts like what medicinal herbs should I use today? There's things to do with your chakras, like what attitudes are involved with my chakra or meridian blockages today? Uh, Which of my chakras is blocked or should be cleansed and how much? Max is actually trying to sit on this book as I read it to you. And it goes into a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So it even gives you charts that... Uh, help you select things like on what topic areas can I work with best with my pendulum today so for example it's got a whole list of different areas that your pendulum would like to indicate that is ready for you to work with today goes right in there's let me see over a hundred and twenty five pendulum charts for you to get to know yourself better And I think that this is the best way possible to get to learn how to use a pendulum because you're getting to know your everyday self in this lifetime. And you'll know if the pendulum is off and you haven't worked with it properly because it'll give you a crap answer and you'll start again and try again and get a correct answer that resonates with you. I promise you if you go through 125 different pendulum exercises, you'll be so in tune with who you are in this life that you may start to be ready to work with who you are in other incarnations as well 
or getting to know and identify spirit guides and uh, advice without a pendulum book and pendulum charts from your higher self. So the name of that book again is The Great Pendulum Book by Petra Sonnenberg. Don't muck around with pendulums. Learn from a trusted source. Go and do reading like you would anyone else or any other new topic in your life. And practice. Practice makes perfect. Practice provides insight. And if your pendulum is not being cooperative or helpful, I always find put it aside. Don't become over-reliant on your pendulum. Take it outside to absorb the sunlight. Cleanse it via salt or in the shower. Or put it around a sound healing tool like a crystal singing bowl and then play the crystal singing bowl and the energy will cleanse the pendulum. So always think about the intention before you use your pendulum. Make sure it is connecting with the light. Learn through practice and don't be impatient trying to reach the technical stuff before you've mastered the basics. So start with the easy things. And don't become reliant because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is to get you to naturally increase your intuitive abilities so that you don't need the tools, that you can learn to distinguish between ego and soul connections and follow the advice by listening and becoming in tune with your soul. A final thought for this episode comes from Henry Ford. Now, I found this on a Google search, which then I always like to go and try and find the original source. However, unfortunately, I don't have a copy of the San Francisco Examiner from the 26th of August, 1928. So I'm going to have to take this quote with a grain of salt and believe that it wouldn't come my way if it was not true. So here we go. Henry Ford says, I adopted the theory of reincarnation when I was 26. Religion offered me nothing to the point. Even work could not give me complete satisfaction. Work is futile if we cannot utilise the experiences we collect in one life in the next. When I discovered reincarnation, it was as if I had found a universal plan. I realised that there was a chance to work out my ideas. Time was no longer limited. I was no longer a slave to the hands of the clock. Genius is experience. Some seem to think that it is a gift or talent, but it is the fruit of long experience in many lives. Some are older souls than others, and so they know more. The discovery of reincarnation put my mind at ease. If you preserve a record of this conversation, write it so that it puts men's minds at ease. I would like to communicate to others the calmness that the long view of life gives to us. And that, my friends, is the end of this episode. I look forward to spending more time with you next week. For further information about how you can use sound journeys to access other incarnations, you can visit my website at katish.com where you can read my blogs and also subscribe to my newsletter, Incarnation Insights. To send me a story about one of your Incarnation Insights, head to the voice recording facility at katish.com forward slash the infinite life podcast. Until next time, take care.